It either takes a great deal of skill or a good grasp on an exploit or two, but some of the scripted losses in games can actually be prevented. Not only that, the game will sometimes take note of your unexpected victory and reward you for it with a secret in the form of an alternative ending or a special complimentary item. Don't let the hopelessness of the following fights discourage you. There's actually a way to win them. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 unwinnable video game fights you can actually win. Number 10, Genichiro Ashina, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Genichiro Ashina is Sekiro's greatest swordsman and your character's main rival, who you fight multiple times throughout the game. Your first fight against Genichiro in the intro is what sets off Sekiro's story, as this is when Genichiro cuts off your hand and kidnaps the prince you've sworn to protect. The fight is incredibly difficult, which is why the developers expect you to lose it and build the plot around your defeat. This said, from a gameplay perspective, the duel can actually be won. It isn't scripted and works like a regular boss fight, so if you're skilled enough to go up against Genichiro without any items or upgrades, Ashina's general can be brought to his knees. Unfortunately, this doesn't alter the course of the story in any way. When Genichiro is defeated, the game fades to black and triggers a cutscene where a hidden ninja slices your hand off anyway, altering Genichiro's dialogue ever so slightly. Well, no one said your efforts and skills were going to be appreciated. We are talking about a From Software game after all, and those aren't really known for treating their player base fairly. Number 9, Shinra Army, Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core is the prequel to Final Fantasy VII, which casts some light on the incident at Nibelheim and the tragic fate of Cloud's friend and role model, Zack Fair. In the game, you play as Zack, experiencing his life from his humble beginnings all the way to his downfall, where you're pitted against a battalion of Shinra troops and doomed to a certain death. The fight is meant to be unwinnable, since it's a turning point in Final Fantasy VII's story. The sheer volume of soldiers combined with their attack attacks can bring Zack down in just a few turns, except if he comes prepared. With enough grinding and stacking up on healing, it's possible to keep Zack alive and give him a fair chance at taking on the army of soldiers. Not only that, you can also wipe out all 1,000 of them, technically winning the encounter. Technically, we gotta say technically, because the following cutscene will still show Zack falling to the ground and dying. Well, it seems no matter how skilled you are, you can never win against scripted cutscenes. Number 8, Commander Zalk, Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3 starts the player off already in the deep waters of Dungeons and Dragons craziness, with a tutorial set inside a Mind Flayer ship, which is flying across one of the circles of the Nine Hells. In the final sequence of the tutorial, the Hell's Devil forces flood the ship's helm, and you need to activate its engine within a time limit with only one not-so-friendly Mind Flayer who's helping you hold off the enemies. The Devil's Commander Zulk is the strongest opponent you face in this section. He's capable of striking down any member of your team in just one turn, which is why the game expects you to run away from him as the Mind Flayer distracts him. However, Zulk can actually be defeated. It takes a lot of random luck and heavy reliance on the Mind Flayer's stun ability, but it's doable within the time limit, and you even get a powerful sword as a reward for it. Just be mindful that killing Zulk will make the Mind Flayer immediately turn on you, and then there's also the remaining army of devils who probably won't let you enjoy your new shining weapon for too long. Ah oh well, you win some, you lose some, and uh, if you win this, enjoy your sword. Number 7, Lavos, Chrono Trigger. Lavos is the main antagonist of Chrono Trigger, as well as its first and final boss. Your initial fight with him is supposed to be unwinnable, as you're essentially going up against the most powerful creature in the game with nothing but your base level equipment and abilities. The loss then forces your party to travel back in time to find a way to stop Lavos from destroying the world, putting the rest of the game's storyline into motion. Well, that's the standard playthrough of Chrono Trigger anyway. An experienced player knows how to defeat Lavos and trigger a completely different outcome. There are two ways of killing Lavos early without involving cheating. One is to beat him in Chrono Trigger's New Game Plus mode, and the other is to use a series of in-game exploits to lower the chance of Lavos hitting you and give you just enough time to deliver the killing blow, which may or may not be cheating depending on how you see exploits. Once you do so, you get a secret ending where the developers of the game personally congratulate you on achieving the impossible. A bit cheeky considering they were clearly prepared for this impossible eventuality. 
Number six, Dallas the Hammer, Divinity Original Sin 2. Dallas the Hammer is a powerful magister from Divinity Original Sin 2, who's secretly an undead imposter, using her likeness to enact their plan of ridding the world of magic. The player can stumble upon this faux Dallas early in the game, inside a location called Fort Joy. Even if you know her secret identity, you can't really pick a fight with her at this stage. She's surrounded by loyal guards and wields almost godlike powers, making it impossible to defeat her. Well, that is unless you use exploits. A common tactic for defeating the fake Dallas early on is using a stack of explosive death fog barrels which you can loot from the ship level preceding Fort Joy. All you need is a character with high enough level strength or telekinesis to carry the barrels and a quick use of a wall clipping glitch in order to reach the location where they're stashed. After procuring the barrels and speaking with Dallas, you place a barrel or two around her character and then blow them up for an instant win that forces her to retreat. Ah. Explosives, the most powerful magic of every fantasy setting. Number five, Overboss Culta, Fallout 4. The Nuka World DLC for Fallout 4 begins with the sole survivor getting trapped inside a deadly gauntlet and then fighting a raider boss, Kulta, or if you'd rather I not use my Australian accent, Coulter, who uses a special electrified power armor, making him impervious to all damage. The way the game wants you to defeat Coulter, yes, I've gone back, is by using a thirst zapper squirt gun that one of his lackeys left in the room leading to the jewel arena. The water breaks Coulter's electric defenses, stunning him and allowing you to deal damage. However, as it turns out, Coulter's invincibility isn't all it's cracked up to be. Though the game wants you to believe Coulter can't be defeated without the water gun, his armor has a secret threshold of damage it can withstand. If you have a weapon that can deal a lot of damage really fast, Coulter can be wounded even in his invincible stage. Of course, defeating him like this is an exploit, so you don't get anything extra from going the extra mile and never touching your free win squirt gun, other than the satisfaction of breaking the game, which let's face it, is pretty good. Number four, surviving the sacrifice, left for dead. The Sacrifice DLC for the original Left 4 Dead includes a special mission that serves as the canonical ending to the game. In the mission, your group makes a final run towards the sailboat, which will allow them to flee to safety. As you cross the bridge leading to the boat, a humongous horde of zombies descends upon you, and one of your teammates is forced to sacrifice themselves by staying behind and raising the bridge, therefore cutting away the horde from the other survivors. The sacrifice is unique in that it's the only mission in the game that requires one player to die in order to complete it. Although, if we're being honest, the fight against the army of zombies isn't really so doomed. The more skilled players can technically fend off the encroaching horde, and if they're fast enough, make it past the bridge before their only path of escape is closed off. The last stand against the zombies is stacked against you, but it's not impossible. In fact, if you manage to flee while playing as Bill, who canonically makes the sacrifice, you get a special achievement called Defying Fate, because who needs cannon when you've got skills? Number three, Sir Cothran, Dragon Age Origins. Dragon Age Origins is a brutal game where each encounter feels like a matter of life and death. Most boss fights in Origins can be classified as hard, but the one that even the developers would consider unwinnable is the encounter with Sir Cothran inside the Denerim Palace. Cothran appears right at the end of your rescue of Queen Anora, where she tries to arrest you for your crimes. She's accompanied by a squad of fully armored guards that surround your party, ensuring any fight that might occur will not end in your favor. The situation demands that you surrender to Cothrin and let her deliver you to Fort Draken, prompting yet another rescue mission where you become the proverbial damsel in distress. However, if you don't feel like getting unjustly imprisoned, you can try to fight your way out. The battle with Cothrin and her knights is one of the toughest encounters in the whole game, but it is doable with the proper crowd control and healing abilities. Beating Cothrin allows you to skip the prison escape sequence entirely. Unfortunately though, it also means missing out on all the amazing banter between your companions as they work together to break you out. Number two, Grafted Scion, Elden Ring. From Software games have a history of impossibly hard tutorial bosses that teach you the important lesson of death and suffering. Dark Souls has the Asylum Demon, while Sekiro puts you against the previously mentioned Genichiro. 
Elden Ring is no different in this regard, featuring a tutorial boss in the form of a horribly contorted heap of dead bodies known as the Grafted Scion. The boss can be encountered only once per playthrough, as dying to it progresses the game to the next stage, so you just get one shot at defeating it. Combine this with the fact that Scion's moves are ridiculously nimble and hard to predict, and it becomes obvious why it's impossible to kill him when you're just starting your game. However, you might have a chance to do it on your next playthrough, but don't get your hopes up about being rewarded for it. The only loot you get from the Scion is a set of mediocre blades, and to make your victory feel all the more bitter, the only way to leave the arena after killing it is to jump off a cliff and die. Well, leave it to From Software to make you feel miserable even when you win. Number 1. Yurizen, Devil May Cry 5 Yurizen from Devil May Cry 5 is a reoccurring boss that the player fights during multiple points in the game, including its intro sequence. Since in the beginning you don't have most of your equipment and abilities, the first fight with Yurizen is a brutal slaughter that the developers clearly expect you to lose, therefore setting off the main story of the game. That said, Yurizen from the intro isn't indestructible. Just like any of his other iterations, he can be killed, although it takes an immense amount of skill and almost just as much time. Not to mention perfect execution, as your defeat is technically scripted, and dying to his attacks will immediately progress the game forward instead of giving you a retry. Speaking of progressing the story, because your defeat is what begins it, if you manage to defeat Yurizen in the intro, the game will have no reason to continue, and you'll get a special secret ending that immediately cuts to credits. You'll also unlock a new difficulty mode, as taking down Yurizen so early is a clear sign the regular difficulty settings are not for you. 